are you going? Just go, just commit forward. I'm not gonna come after you. working on handstands Ooh. ever again. Do you think creatine and glutamine supplements are necessary if you want to build muscle? Supplements, I talk about this a lot, supplements are just that. They are here to supplement a consistent exercise and nutritional approach. Are they necessary? No. No supplements are necessary for progress. I cannot encourage that enough. There are so many companies that'll say they found the secret to muscle building or fat loss or you have to have this product to do this or to reach this goal. They're not. They can help enhance progress when done consistently, but with a good workout and nutritional approach. They can help optimize results, but it might be the difference of like one or two percent in your physique. So they're not necessary. They can help, but not necessary. How many days without exercising should one take at minimum? Like with most fitness questions, it's very subjective just depending on your experience, depending on what your body is used to. I usually recommend at minimum, at minimum one day. And that's if you have been working out and lifting for years and your body is well adapted to a high volume exercise schedule. At minimum a day. I went through a time where I wasn't resting ever and my body was beat up. Do not, do not push through every single day of every single week because our body and our muscles grow and recover in our rest days and in our rest periods. So sleep and rest days are crucial to progress and not only that but healthy hormone function. If you're constantly beating your body up, breaking down those muscle fibers um, and putting your body under all of these external stressors. Actually, the our stress levels. Woo! The sun is bright. It's beautiful. Our body will actually release stress hormones as a response. To all of the activity, and you can store fat or stall with your progress. So, at very minimum, one day of rest. More would be optimal. Sometimes I have a really good workout, I feel the burn and push through. I expect to be sore the next day, but I'm not. Am I doing something wrong or right? This is a great question. I have this question a lot by new clients and something that I used to struggle with. Um, I would go through workouts and I'd be like, yeah, I'm like sweating and I would feel awesome. And like I got a really good workout and I pushed really hard. Man, I'm gonna be so sore, this is gonna be awesome. And then I wake up the next day expecting for that soreness, like validation that my workout was good and there's nothing. And I don't feel extremely fatigued, I don't feel sore and I had no idea what was going on. So then I would push harder and I would think that because I wasn't sore, I wasn't having a good workout and that is definitely not the case. I, I can't recall who it was, but they put it in really good terms. If you think about somebody that works manual labor, so say somebody that works in construction, whenever they started the job, they started out and probably the first week or two, they were really, really sore after because it's a very intense job. There's a lot of heavy lifting. There's a lot of moving around. So think about how sore they probably were. Do you think that they're still sore every single day after going to work? Probably not. This is because this is the same way that our body responds to lifting. It's because our body adapts, our muscles adapt. So they get used to doing the same movement. So if you're doing a lot of squatting or leg pressing or shoulder pressing, in the beginning, it's going to be a shock for your body because those muscles aren't used to pushing that load or they're not used to working in that way. So that's why we're insanely sore when we first get started or after taking a long break. Our body gets used to what we consistently do. Our muscles get used to that. We're not sore because it's something that you're consistent with. But it doesn't mean that it's a bad workout and it doesn't mean that you're not growing. The biggest indication of growth and progress is just more volume over time. So are you increasing in those numbers? Are those burpees feeling better? Are they feeling easier? Are you getting faster? Are you able to run for a longer period of time? Are you able to climb better? 
So that's the indication of progress and growth. If you're physically changing, if you're feeling better, if you're getting better and stronger in your workouts, that should weigh more than whether you're sore or not. And there's an article on Muscle for Life, I'm gonna link it below, how to reduce muscle soreness. But they have a really good little section on actual soreness. I'm gonna read some of this to you guys. Workouts that create large amounts of muscle soreness won't necessarily result in muscle growth. And workouts that cause little to no soreness can result in significant muscle growth. For instance, if you do an hour of downhill running, your legs are going to be very sore the next day, but downhill running is definitely not going to build big, strong legs. Because of generally poor correlations between DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, and other indicators, we conclude that DOMS is a poor reflector of eccentric exercise-induced muscle damage and inflammation, and changes in indirect markers of muscle damage and inflammation are not necessarily accompanied with DOMS. In other words, damaged muscles won't necessarily hurt, and muscles that hurt aren't necessarily damaged. So basically this is saying just because you're sore and just because it's painful, it doesn't always equate to growth and change. You can do exercises effectively or you can do exercises until you feel the burn. Do this and feel the burn, but it's not gonna mean that my shoulders are going to grow. Progressive overload is where that growth happens. So I hope that answers the question. I'm gonna link that article below. I highly recommend any of you guys that are watching this right now, go read it and leave your thoughts in the comments below. You wanna see Matt get awkward real fast? What are the do's and don'ts of training while on your period? Mm. <laughs> Why are we filming me? Why am I in this? <laughs> Just, uh... So there's really no right or wrong way to go about training while on your period. It really just boils down to what you feel up to and how your body responds best. So typically whenever I'm going through that time of the month, I'm super fatigued, everything aches, tired in all senses. The last thing I wanna do is go to the gym. Now sometimes I feel better after I go to the gym, but sometimes pushing through is worse for my body and my mentality. So you really just have to take it one week or one month at a time and see what you're up to. It is recommended that you get more sleep and more rest during this time because your body is going through a lot of hormonal changes. So sleep and recovery is very, very important when you're on your period. Staying hydrated, you're gonna feel bloated. It's gonna help with that, but as far as do's and don'ts, there aren't really any necessary do's and don'ts that I know of. Um, I'm gonna leave a link below for an article that talks about uh, training around your period and knowing your cycle a little bit better and how to work best alongside your body rather than trying to work against it during that time of the month. I would just recommend listening to your body and that's gonna take some trial and error. So if you find that training through that time of the month is just a nightmare for you, maybe take it as your rest week and do light cardio or get out. Take that time as, as a way to um, try new things, uh, but not anything that's too strenuous. Yeah, that's that's definitely what I recommend. It all boils down to just listening to your body. So read that article below, and if you have any recommendations or know any other information about it, I'd love to read it in the comments. Do you have any advice on seeing food as food and just getting to that mentality? How do you stay body positive when you're bloated or gaining weight? I will tell you guys that this is not a linear journey. So since I've started working on my self-confidence, body positivity, relationship with food, there are really good days and there are really, really bad days still. My first piece of advice as to seeing food as food is seriously starting from within. So starting with that self-confidence and learning how to accept and love your body at every stage. Your relationship with food isn't going to be able to improve unless you can see your body for the amazing thing that it is. Staying positive and confident in times of either gaining weight or bloating because it happens. I'm going through a time right now. I'm coming off of a weekend where I ate a lot of food and I'm definitely up on the scale. And it previously would have sent me over the edge. I would have been super depressed. I would have hated how I looked in the mirror. I probably would have punished myself with extra cardio or really, really hard workouts, but being able to just accept it and move on is one of the best things that you can do 
for both your confidence and this journey as a whole. What I would recommend if you're going through a time of being bloated or if you are gaining weight and it's for reasons that are somewhat out of your control. So if you are trying to step back from obsessive dieting or obsessive exercise and you are going to gain weight, which is most likely going to happen, I would recommend just getting into new hobbies, doing things that make you feel good. Not focusing all of your time on weight training or cardio or dieting and not basing your entire life around fitness. And I use these air quotes because you can look physically fit on the outside, but you can be the most mentally unhealthy person on the inside. Moving away from equating this with who you are as a person or everything that's important to you is one of the best things that you can do. Whenever you're trying to find new hobbies and do things that make you feel good, it doesn't have to be health related. It doesn't have to be fitness related. You can try volunteering your time and helping to better other people's lives because that's one of the best ways to feel better um, and more optimistic is to know that you're making a difference in the world. There's only so much that your physique can do for the world. There's only so much that your physique can do for the world. Wearing comfortable clothes is a huge thing for me. So whenever I am feeling bloated or if I'm gaining weight and clothes are getting tight, I go and I buy something new that makes me feel good, regardless of the size. Something that I can feel comfortable and good in. And if that means sweatpants and a t-shirt, then so be it. If you're gonna feel better about yourself, then wear that for a few days as you figure things out. Another thing is to stay off of the scale. Stay away from the scale because it's only gonna bring negativity into your day. If it doesn't bring something positive into your day, get rid of it. Scrolling through those Fitzbo accounts on Instagram, tracking your food obsessively, weighing your food obsessively, measuring yourself, body checking yourself in the mirror. So whenever you walk by a mirror, if you check what your stomach looks like, or if you check to see how tight your pants look on your body, try and move away from those things because those only add negativity to your day and they really, really do add up. Weighing yourself here, checking the Fitzbo account here, they really add up to how you feel about yourself. So be more aware of those things and try and limit those external stresses that you're gonna place on your body. Now, like I said, these definitely do way into your relationship with food. So if you feel good about your body, if you feel confident with yourself, you're gonna stop seeing food as being on this pedestal. It's gonna be food, it's not going to measure who you are as a person, it's not gonna weigh onto your guilt or your conscience as much because you don't see it as something that's going to make you fat or gain weight. You just see food as food and if it just so happens to make you feel bloated or not as good, you can kind of take that into account and move forward with your life. It doesn't become this detrimental thing if eating a few cookies makes you feel a little heavier the next day. It really, really goes hand in hand. And this is one thing that I've been trying to share with others as I've learned more about myself. So I would love to talk more about this topic. If you have any other questions or would like me to elaborate more, on this subject, hit the thumbs up and leave me a comment below because like I said, this is my passion, you guys. I want to help you guys find your version of healthy and strong as I am closer and closer to that for myself each and every day. So I appreciate you guys watching this Q&A. You guys are awesome. Thank you for sending all of the wonderful questions that I've been getting. Keep them coming in the comments below. Love you guys. Make sure and hit that thumbs up and I will see y'all on Monday.